What is happening guys? Welcome back. So another episode on this Yamaha XB750 Cafe Racer build. In the last one, we got this front end on sort of mocked up in place, temporarily fitted on, just to give us a bit of an idea as to what the bike was gonna look like. And I've got to say, it looks a hell of a lot better just by doing that and sitting that fuel tank up. So in this one, we're gonna be getting this front end fitted on, hopefully properly, as the Cognito Moto replacement stem for the R6 triple trees and for the XB750 frame has arrived from America, as well as all of these goodies. So, few parts, rear brake light, which is brake side light, brake light and indicators built into one. Um, we've got the anti-gravity battery and the lithium charger. Some connectors, which I'm not sure if we're gonna use or not yet. Some new drill bits, because who didn't like new drills? Headlight, all in one. So this has got everything in it, including the indicators, which is a real nice, neat unit in a shallow, shallow bucket, which is cool. We've got Rick's electric uh, regulator rectifier. We've got some nice looking new rear sets, which we're probably going to get powdered or uh, painted of some sort. We've got some bar and we've got the rear seat hoop, which we're going to have the brake light sort of frenched into the back of, which will be nice. Bearings and the new Cognito Moto stem, which is what we're going to be talking about in this episode. These bits here. Now, these are the bits that I've been talking about. You've got the Moto Gadget Mo unit, blue, so this is Bluetooth, this connects to your phone and you can control it and set it up and do all sorts of things with it. We've got the buttons that will be on the handlebars, two sets of those which are really nice and really well made. And this, look at this. This is the dashboard. It's gonna be on the bike and look at that. What a bit of care. So yeah, that goes on that plate and we'll be mounting that onto the bike. This little button here, awesome little bit of kit. So this goes into the handlebars here all of the different coloured wires go off to the each different sort of button so that they can go off to the turn signals or whatever. And that one long green wire goes back down to that unit and that one green wire sends the signals from the handlebars for every single button to the Mo unit via one wire. Mind blown. What a bit of kit. I mean, that is not a cheap system. I think just for the Moto Gadget stuff, it's about £1,000. But I'm not saying this bike's got an unlimited budget. I just want to do it right and I want to put the best things on that I can afford to get this bike as good as we can. I don't really know what most of it does, but we'll have to work that out. But what this episode is gonna be talking about is this little bad boy. So this has been shipped all the way from Cognito Moto, who are in America. I think they're in Virginia, I think. Um, and this is basically a brand new machined stem, which fits the R1 triple tree, but it's the right length and diameter and everything with those bearings to go into the XV750 tube on the head head tube on the bike. So we need to press the old stem out of the R1 triples and put the new one in. So I've ordered online a 12 ton press. Now yeah, it's a bit Mickey Mouse, but for 120 quid for a 12 ton press, I'm not sure if it is 12 ton. What can you say? It'll do a job. As long as it works, that's all that matters. So first thing we need to do, get that off that front end of that bike and see about pressing this out. There we go then, stem pressed out of this. Now John and Steve were just nipped in as I was doing that, so they sort of gave me a bit of a hand, put the blanket around it because we were putting a hell of a lot of pressure on that. And if something had have moved or something had come flying out, it could have hurt you, put a blanket around it, it's gonna at least get slowed down by the blanket. Um, but that came out, I've got to say, easier than I expected it. A lot easier, a lot easier than I expected it to. So now that one's out, it's time to press 
this nice new one in. So what I'm gonna do is grease these two surfaces up. I've got the two plates on there. I've cut myself a little bit of tube because this is all I can really find that's gonna work with this. That will slide over there to support as close to the bearing as possible. Stem through the hole. Push it all back together. Everything's sitting about the right place. And we'll start pressing away. So I'll lube these up and then we'll hopefully get this pressed in. new stem fitted. Now we've got that pressed in there, we need to start looking at what's going on bearing wise and things of that nature. So what I've done already is I've knocked the race into the bottom of this already, which so this one's pieces, is this bearing in two pieces. So this is the race that goes into the head tube and the bearing goes on the stem. So I've already knocked this one in. As you can see, it's in there nice and shiny. They're really not massively tight, so all I've used is just a drift and a hammer just to work my way around, knock it in, being careful not to scratch the inside of it, that's obviously what the bearings run on. So we've done that, and then what you've got to now do is select out of the pack that it comes with, it comes with some spacers, and you need to determine what you need. Now we've got quite a big step here from the bearing race down to the end. We've also got a bit of a step on this here, so I've selected we need these two spacers which will go on and the seal goes on and the bearing will be pressed on as well but what we're going to do first is pack that bearing full of grease we'll go back over to the press press that bearing on and we'll be able to test this side of it so now that's all packed with grease and looking good we're going to get it on the press to press this together Making sure we're starting off all nice and square, as square as we can be. That's pretty good. Now that's pressed on, let's try this in here. Bang on, bearings running. Got a nice space down there. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I think, right, let's knock this top one in. So there's that top one pressed in. Let's try this on and see if this top, top bearing fits in. Ooh. Now that's done, we'll try this in. Let's go up here through the top bearing as well which is on with the dust cover. We've got a spacer that came in the new bearing kit as well, just so that we get a nice, good fix in with all the threads on this top one, using the original R6 fixings, uh, R1, sorry, fixings. I'm not sure how tight to do these, but we're not riding it on the road yet. It's literally for having it in the workshop, so we'll just give it a little nip. on as well. Locked off this on to stop it from turning. I think that should be about it. So they're on. We can put the forks back on, put all the front end up here if it'll fit or we can get it on. Put the top on. Call that part one nearly done. And there we go, front end is on as it should do, fitting nice and correctly. So I did end up putting a little bit of grease in the top bearings just in case I want to end up taking it down the yard when we get it running. Um, but we've got a real nice gap down here. Um, so you just have to make sure that you 
spend the time getting the correct spaces and everything in place on the bottom because like I say this this bit here this bit here on this bike is quite deep so you just have to make sure you get them in the correct order of space obviously it's a bit of a universal bearing set they send out for multiple different bikes top is the bearings just in there there's the dust cover another spacer and then we've got the two nuts with the locking pin that that is actually what bolts the stem and holds this bottom triple in place this top one like i said in the last video is really just for spacing and keeping everything in the correct place top nut is on we might get a nicer looking nut for the top of here but essentially that front end is on and we could use it super easy okay it isn't the cheapest thing i think that stem was about 185 dollars with the bearings delivered from the states which i have to say i don't think is that bad for how well machined everything is um, and the ease really of doing it um so that is that little bit done now i was gonna make this video even longer and start on the next few bits but i've just decided i'm going to split these videos down into smaller sort of shorter episodes so that is this episode done hopefully you like the video and you've gained something from it i've had quite a few messages from people saying that after watching this they're now thinking of doing a cafe race to build themselves or they've actually bought a bike to start so um yeah sorry i apologize for that but have fun because they are nice and fun to work on so we will leave that one there then guys hope you've enjoyed it until next time enjoy <laughs>